Please stand. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, <laughs> death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and loving each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Let's be seated. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14, the story of the Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at the twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. I will lift the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will lift the cup of salvation and call upon the of the Lord. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given it to me. Pray. 
presence of all God's people, precious is your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant, I am your servant, the child of your handmaid, you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, I will lift the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel of the Lord according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, 
you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so I say to you now, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. The simplest of means, water, a towel, to demonstrate not what he was, but who he was, Jesus knelt on the floor and began to perform a task that in that culture was reserved exclusively for servants or slaves. This shocked his disciples, especially the impetuous Peter, but Jesus' words brought him around. Peter quickly recognized Jesus' act as the most poignant, the most powerful illustration of humility that he had ever seen. That is, until a day later when Jesus would go willingly to the cross. The simplest of means, a plate, to demonstrate not how we are to celebrate him, but how we are to remember him. Not through a miracle, not by fasting, not with a wall plaque or a piece of jewelry or a painting or even an icon, which is why we have no depictions of Jesus in our sanctuary but with a meal, and not just any meal, but the simplest of meals, bread and wine, ordinary eating and drinking. By this we are to remember him, to remember him as one who bent low so that we with him may be lifted out of our desolation, to remember him as one who entered into the darkness of our lives, to assure us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Darkness, desolation. Jesus knew what it was to inhabit the night country. At this meal shared in love, he knew what was coming. Betrayal, a mock trial, justice denied, and a gruesome death from which at the 11th hour in the fullness of his humanity, he begged his father to save him. But it could not be because sin and grace had to meet on the cross just as they did in this seemingly simple meal that we heard about, seemingly because what our lectionary skips over in tonight's reading is that actual moment when Satan entered in to Judas. This moment is critical because it provides an additional dimension to our remembering of that night. We are to remember the act of love Jesus performed for everyone present at that table. As Jesus kneels on the hard floor with the towel wrapped around him, he knows what Judas is about to do. He is aware that Satan has entered in. And yet Judas receives the same expression of love 
as do the other disciples. Jesus washes his feet. Jesus gives him bread. Jesus gives him the cup, the bread of his body, the cup of salvation for Judas as well as for the others. And then Jesus gives the commandment, the mandatum, the mandate, which is where we get the word mandi, that this is how we also should love. Friends, how hard is this when you think about it? We may like the idea, but do we practice it? To love those who are out to get us? To embrace those who are trying to bring us down? In this, I have failed spectacularly. In my first call, the matron of the congregation had it in for me from the beginning. She not only talked behind my back, she disparaged me right in front of other people, especially at the coffee hour where everyone gathered after worship. She was a lone voice, but a loud one. One time she sat in my office, shook her finger at me for 45 minutes while she accused me of being a perfectionist, <laughs> guilty as charged. <laughs> and I'm still working on that. <laughs> Later that same week, I shared this very difficult experience with my spiritual director. He said, you need to pray for her. Imagine her sitting in front of you, bathed in light. I couldn't do it. In the effort to do this, I broke down and wept. I did not have the resources to love as Jesus calls us to love. And I'm still working on that too. How do we fail to carry out Jesus's commandment? We are happy enough to wash feet and break bread of those who look familiar to us, who talk, think, look, and act like us. But it doesn't seem to bother us that we exclude those who don't fit our narrow image of family due to race, ethnicity, disability, gender, age, sexuality, status, or lifestyle? Here's the remedy, though. If you are fortunate enough to be walking out on the street and encounter a person who seems to be homeless, for goodness sake, go up and talk to them. If you don't know what to say, just ask, where are you staying? It'll be interesting and prepare yourself because you don't want to flinch in front of them. If you are blessed enough to be sharing a meal with people from walks of life other than yours, for goodness sake, go and sit with them. If someone crosses the threshold of our sanctuary who doesn't fit the mold, for goodness sake, tell them how glad you are that they have come and find out a little something about them. And be sure to tell me. Not to do these things makes people feel excluded and unwelcome. And I know that's not who we are. And even so, we struggle. So where is our hope? The point of the great liturgical drama of Holy Week that we're entering into is that, is that each of us is called through these three days to be transformed. Year after year, as we reenact these same rituals, we are invited to play all the roles. The singing of Alleluia's on Easter is the most festive of these, but tonight and tomorrow we run the entire gamut of human experience. Tonight we allow ourselves to receive acts of unconditional love and then to be commanded to live these out in our lives. But then as we near the end of tonight's liturgy, the screen on which this tender scene is projected is suddenly yanked up to reveal darkness. Where are the sets? Where are the lights? Gone. In the emptiness that remains, we find ourselves looking down the dark tunnel toward tomorrow when we will come face to face with the fruit of our betrayal, the crucified God. We will abandon him on the cross, 
we will forsake him as one who then himself feels forsaken. This is the journey of our own souls, from the fear-filled failure to love well, to the betrayal of those dearest to us in the futile effort to save ourselves. This is what Jesus means when he says that those who save their life will lose it. Instead, tonight, lose your life. Abandon yourself to the one who can save us, the only one, because only then will you be equipped for the good news of the empty tomb. Amen. Foot-washing ceremony is beloved among Christians for the symbolism it represents of service, humility, and equality practiced by Jesus' followers. You are invited now, if you choose, to come forward for this expression of love, or you may go back by the font to experience the power of healing touch with Kathy and Lou, or you may do both, or you may do neither and simply pray as we hear quiet music being played.
On this holy night, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy. By the cross of Christ, mend the brokenness of your church. Where there is division, grant healing. Where there is fracture, grant unity. Where there is indifference, grant passion. By the cross of Christ, mend the brokenness of the creation. Put an end to destruction and renew our commitment to the fullness of life you intend for every living thing. of Christ, mend the brokenness of human family. Bring understanding and a spirit of cooperation to the nations and communities in conflict. Dissolve distrust into understanding and transform disregard into profound care for one another. Christ, mend the brokenness of those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Feed those who hunger. Give shelter to those without a home. Heal the sick and grant resting to the dying. of Christ, mend the brokenness of this community. Help us seek not so much to be served, but to serve. Not to be loved, but to love. Not to be forgiven, but to forgive. For the sake of the gospel. of Christ, mend the brokenness within us. Cast out all fear of separation from you and join us to the communion of saints who celebrate at your eternal banquet table. We 
pray to you, O God, in the name of the one who endured the cross, forgives our sin, and feeds us at this table, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of that peace. We are 
receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. 
Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. At that same meal, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. for 
sacrament you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
righteousness in the country where all is forgotten. But as for me, O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors and am helpless. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They so 